All right, so when we have rough inclined planes, rough inclined planes are planes that are not, inclined planes that are not frictionless. Um, we have a special angle. The angle at which an object would begin to slide is called the critical angle. Critical angle where the object would begin to slide. So I can write this as theta crit or theta critical. So it's the angle at which it begins to slide. So imagine you have a surface and you put a block here and you can move the surface like this, right? And you start moving, you can try this yourself with a book or something on a desk and you start moving and the block doesn't move really move yet. The reason why the block doesn't move is because even though it has an MGX this way, there is a static friction this way that's holding it. If it was a frictionless surface, even the tiniest angle would cause the object to accelerate. But on frictional surfaces, that doesn't happen. And you keep doing this, you keep doing this, and eventually, if you go really slowly, there's going to be an angle at which the object will start to move. That's the critical angle, okay? And what's special about that angle is that at that angle, the block's MGX, right? So you're pu being pulled down this way by MGX. It will exactly equal, or equals exactly, which means it will cancel the static friction on it, okay? So just before it starts moving, let's say it started moving at 37 degrees. That means that at 36.99 uh, degrees, uh, right before that started happening, or approximately at that angle, um, these forces were exactly the same, okay? Friction, static, maximum. Remember, the whole deal with static friction or with maximum static friction is that you have to overcome it. If the friction static maximum is, say, 30, um, this MGX here will increase as you do this, right? As you do this, the block wants to fall even more. Um, eventually, once this reaches 30, it's at the breaking point. And then at the slightest additional angle, means that this thing will start moving, okay? So we say that they're exactly the same at that point. So we can write that MGX is exactly equal to um, mu, I'm sorry, friction static max, okay? That's the critical angle. Now, there's another angle that's important as well, and it's one that will cause an object to slide at a constant speed. So if I break static friction, what happens? I'm now going up against kinetic friction, but because kinetic friction is less, the second this block starts moving, this kinetic friction is less, let's say friction kinetic drops down to 25. The only reason I started moving in the first place was because this was 30 or 30.001. Um, and now if I keep moving, I'm going to not just slide across, but I'm going to accelerate because 30, was what I needed to overcome this, but 30 is bigger than 25. So this block is now going to accelerate down. As soon as you break static friction, you accelerate. The second angle, which is the one that I want to talk about, is an angle that allows you to, instead of accelerate down the plane, move down the plane with a constant speed, which means that there is no acceleration. How is that possible? I just told you that if you break, um, if you break static friction, it's going to accelerate down, and it will. The only way that this is possible is that you put the block um, at an angle that would not overcome static friction, because MGX would be, let's say, exactly 25. It doesn't move, but you're going to push on it so that you are causing static friction to be broken. Once you break static friction, the friction against you is now 25, so all you need to keep moving is 25 okay hopefully that made sense it's a little weird um, especially at first so constant speed which means at this point MGX cancels the kinetic friction and the, the reason why it cancels is because it's the same number just opposite directions okay so MGX equals kinetic friction so again first situation you're not moving and you're also not touching the block, this gets to a certain point, and now it's going to accelerate down. On the other one is, you're not at that point yet, but someone pushes it just so that it starts moving, and now it keeps moving, 
um, because static friction or because kinetic friction is less than static friction. Okay, the setup for these is pretty straightforward. If you have to derive the equation, right? Sum of all forces, uh, we're going to call this the x-axis here. Sum of all forces in the x-axis equals ma. We want to talk about the critical angle, which is the angle um, where you don't move. At this point, what's happening is your mgx is the same as your friction static max, right? So what are the forces acting on you if you are not moving you want to find a critical angle? Well, let's say, let's call this the positive x direction. So mgx is positive, but friction static is negative. And this will equal zero because the object is at equilibrium up there. Okay, so look what happens. I move this over to this side and I have mgx equals friction. That makes sense. They're canceling, we already mentioned that. So what I'm gonna do now is expand these two expressions here. Instead of mgx, I'm gonna write mg sine of theta. And instead of friction on the other side, I'm gonna write mu static normal. Now remember, in these inclined plane problems, normal is the same as mgy as long as they are the only two forces acting on the y-axis here, right? Which they are. So normal equals mgy, and mgy is mg cosine of theta. So this becomes mg sine of theta equals mu static mg cosine of theta. And then look what happens here, pretty neat. Um, m and g cancel on both sides, and then you're left with mu static equals, if I divide both sides by cosine to get the cosine out of the right side, I get sine over cosine, and that's tangent, right? That's the tangent of theta. So I started here by saying that mgx equals friction max, and I ended up here. I was able to derive this using very simple f equals ma. Uh, depending on, on your professor, you may or may not have to do this yourself, okay? So that's cool. Uh, in physics, because this is a very simple answer, uh, physicists actually call this an elegant solution, which is funny, but it just means that it's a very simplistic answer, a very simple answer with um, just two variables, right? Um, if you wanted to find, so if you want to find mu, you can find by doing the tangent of the critical angle. Let me put a little crits here. The other thing I can do is if I want to find a critical angle, I can just take the arc tangent of both sides. So this equation um, can be swapped around and saying theta critical is the arc tangent, it's kind of hard to fit here, of mu static. These two equations are equivalent. You get from one to the other very easily. Okay? So that's cool. Um, and what's interesting is actually you can use this to figure out the coefficient of friction between a block and an incline. So you got a block, you got an incline, you can do this with like a calculator on your arm. And then the second it starts moving, you could get a protractor measured here. Um, and once you get that angle measurement of the critical angle, you just stick it in here and you're able to experimentally, you might have done this in lab, or you might do this in lab, um, figure out the static friction just by measuring that angle. Cool. Um, the second part here is very similar. Um, we're going to try to find which angle, which angle gives you a constant speed down the plane. And we're going to do this by writing f equals ma because I have a force problem as well. Sum of all forces in the x-axis equals max. And the forces now, if you are moving with a constant speed, it means that you're going up against kinetic friction. Okay, so I'm going to have mgx in the positive direction. Uh, but kinetic friction, whoops, kinetic friction in the negative direction. The acceleration is still zero because it's a constant speed. So this setup is exactly the same as this, except that here it's friction um, static max, and here is friction kinetic. I'm going to move this over to the other side. It's going to be mg sine of theta equals mu kinetic, um, mu kinetic, normal, which is mu kinetic mg cosine of theta. And again, the mg cancels. I'm doing this a little bit faster because it's very similar to the other one. And you end up with this. Mu kinetic equals the tangent of theta. It's the same equation. It's just that this is static mu and this is kinetic mu. 
This is the critical angle at which you wouldn't move at all. And this is the angle that would give you constant speed. Okay. So one way that you can think about this is that this is the critical angle for static. And this is the critical angle for kinetic. Okay, so the critical angle for static is the angle at which it would begin to move, and the kinetic critical angle would be the angle at which it keeps a constant speed. Okay, so those are slightly different um, situations. And obviously, here I can also do the arc tangent thing to get that the theta, the critical angle, the kinetic critical angle, is the arc tangent of the kinetic coefficient of friction. Two special angles here, we call them critical, but they're really just two special angles. One angle at which you would achieve static um, constant speed and the other angle at which you would just break it. I have an example here that helps uh, illustrate this and, 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 and so you see how this would work. It says here, after playing with the block on adjustable on an adjustable incline, so you get to adjust an incline, you'll find out that you find out two things. One, that it slides down from rest for angles 37 or greater. So you're doing this as soon as it hits 37, it slides down. So what does that tell you? That tells you that that 37 is your critical static angle. It's 37. So when I say that it slides down from rest for these angles, I'm telling you this, okay? Point two says it slides with a constant speed when theta is 30. So number two, it says that it slides with constant speed, which means the angle at which I would slide with constant speed is my critical angle, my kinetic critical angle. So I'm telling that theta critical kinetic is 30 okay so this piece of information is telling us this and then it says we're going to use this information to calculate the coefficients of friction i'm going to know mu static and mu kinetic and at this point since we already derived these equations here we can simply use these equations because these equations um, are a link between critical angle and coefficient of friction right so if i have this and i want this I can just use an equation that combines the two. And that equation is that mu static is the tangent of theta static, right? The critical, the static critical angle. In other words, it's the tangent of 37. And the tangent of 37 is 0 0.75. Same thing here. Mu kinetic is the tangent of the kinetic critical angle, or the critical angle at which you would slide down at constant speed. So it's the tangent of 30 degrees, and the answer is 0 0.577. So two last points here to make. One, notice how this angle is greater than this angle. Because the idea is that the only way that the second situation that happens here, that you slide with a constant speed, is that you're not at the angle at which you would break static friction because if you were, you would accelerate. You're at less than that, but someone pushed the box. And that person caused the static friction to break, and now it just keeps moving with kinetic friction going against it. Okay? So it makes sense that this angle is greater. And we already know that static friction is either greater or the same as kinetic, so it makes sense that this is greater as well. Okay? That's it for this one. A little weird, I know, but hopefully this made sense. Let me know if you have any questions.